Hey there, fellow knowledge seekers. Today we're taking a deep dive into AI and finance. We're looking at this research paper that kind of flips the script on some assumptions about AI and finance, like whether it can actually understand financial statements and if its predictions about future earnings are all they're cracked up to be. You know, from all the recent headlines, it seems like AI can do just about anything, right? Beat chess masters, write symphonies, you name it. But can AI really grasp something as complex as financial analysis? That's where large language models or LLMs come in. They're the brains behind things like chatbots and text generators. And they've been making waves in the finance world. Yeah, and this paper really tests those capabilities in a systematic way. It zeroes in on two major challenges. First, how well AI can reason with numbers. Can it actually do more than just process them? And second, look ahead bias, which is the sneaky issue where AI might seem like it's predicting the future, but it's actually using information it shouldn't have access to. Kind of like peeking at the answer key before you take the test. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Right, right. So the study starts with something pretty basic, asking LLMs to do simple addition and subtraction using real company balance sheets. But here's the catch. Even with these simple calculations, the AI's accuracy went down as the number of numbers involved went up. Hmm. That's interesting. So that suggests that AI doesn't see numbers the way we do. It's more like it perceives them as a sequence of symbols, you know, rather than understanding their inherent value. So then think about what that means for financial analysis. If AI struggles with basic math, how can we expect it to deal with complex financial statements? Yeah, that's a really good point. So to test this, the researchers use the DuPont analysis. It's a classic method for breaking down a company's profitability into key ratios like profit margin and asset turnover. And what they found was that when faced with complete financial statements, the AI struggled to get accurate results, almost like it was overwhelmed by all the information. But here's where things get really interesting. The researchers then gave the AI a tool called a code interpreter. Basically, it's like a helper that takes care of the number crunching. Uh huh. And so with that tool, the AI's accuracy shot up to almost 100%. So it's not that AI can't analyze financial statements. It just needs the right tools to manage that numerical complexity. This opens up a whole new way of thinking about how we can use AI in finance. Like, what if we can design tools that play to AI strengths, tools that handle the calculations while the AI focuses on extracting insights from all sorts of data? OK, so that's pretty amazing. But now let's talk about the elephant in the room. This look ahead bias. We've all seen those headlines about AI predicting the stock market. But what if some of these predictions are based on information that the AI shouldn't have? like news articles that already discuss the company's future earnings. Right, right. The researchers were really smart about how they tackled this. They tested AI models with different knowledge cutoffs, meaning they limited the information the AI could access from different time periods. Like, it's a way to make sure the AI isn't getting any sneak peeks into the future. Oh, I see. So what happened when they put these AI models to the test? Well, the results were pretty striking. The AI's ability to predict future earnings, it took a major nosedive when it couldn't access information from the future. It's like a real reality check on some of those hyped up claims about AI's predictive powers. And this wasn't just limited to less sophisticated AIs either. OK, so the study found that even the most advanced LLMs like GPT-4, they showed this look ahead bias, too. Yeah. It really underscores how important it is to critically examine AI's capabilities mm. and not just assume that it's magically smarter than us. It's really fascinating because if these models are essentially just very good at recognizing patterns, you know, even to the point of memorizing data, then how should we be thinking about using them in financial research and decision making? That's a great question. So we've talked about the limitations of AI, the need for tools to handle the numerical side of things, and this sneaky issue of look-ahead bias. Yeah. But amidst all this, the paper does highlight some exciting potential for AI in finance. For instance, it points out that AI is exceptionally good at extracting information from all sorts of sources, text, images, even audio. 
when it doesn't have to grapple with complex calculations. Okay, so instead of just crunching numbers, imagine an AI that can analyze CEO speeches, investor presentations, even social media sentiment to get a much richer picture of a company. It could totally revolutionize how we understand the forces driving a company's performance moving beyond the numbers to capture those intangible factors. Yeah, and what's fascinating here is the potential to analyze data that's typically beyond the reach of traditional financial analysis. Like we could look at satellite images to track supply chains or analyze audio from earnings calls to gauge market sentiment. Wow, that's incredible. Could change the game completely. So while this research definitely gives us a reality check on the limitations of AI, it also reveals this whole world of possibilities. Right. It's a call to be cautious, but also to be excited about the future of AI in finance. This paper shows us that AI can be a powerful tool, but we need to understand its strengths and weaknesses and develop ways to mitigate those weaknesses. It sounds like we're on the verge of a major shift in how finance works, how we invest, and how we understand the markets. It is a very exciting time to be in this field, but we have to be mindful of how we use AI. We need to make sure it serves us and not the other way around. We've got a lot more to unpack about this research, so stay tuned as we continue our deep dive into AI and finance. You know, one thing that really struck me about this research was how it kind of demystifies AI. You know, it breaks down how these LLMs actually learn and shows that it's not magic, it's a process, one that we can understand and evaluate. Yeah, you're right. We often hear about these massive AI models with billions of parameters, but what does that actually mean? How do they go from like a jumble of data to making these sophisticated predictions? It sounds pretty complicated. Well, it is complex, but the underlying idea is surprisingly intuitive. Imagine teaching a child a language. You'd surround them with words, stories, conversations. And that's essentially what happens with LLMs. So you're saying they're fed massive amounts of data? Exactly. Huge data sets of text, you know, from books and articles to code and online conversations. And by analyzing all this data, they start to recognize patterns. They learn to predict what words are likely to come next in a sentence, to understand the relationships between concepts. It's like they're absorbing the grammar of language, but also the subtleties of meaning and context. That's fascinating. It's like teaching a computer to read and understand the world just like we do. Right, right. And what's really interesting is that this learning happens through a process called self-supervised learning. Unlike traditional machine learning, where you need humans to label the data. In self-supervised learning, the data itself provides the labels. So they're essentially learning by doing, by constantly analyzing, predicting, and refining their understanding based on the information they're given. Exactly. That's it. And the more data they're given, the better they get at this pattern recognition and making those connections. That's why the size of these models, the billions of parameters, is so important. It allows them to capture these incredibly complex patterns in the data. So bigger models, more data, better performance. But as we've seen, there's a potential downside to all this data. Yeah. That's where the look-ahead bias creeps in. Precisely. The paper highlights how this vast sea of data used for training can create problems when it comes to making predictions about the future because the AI might pick up on patterns that aren't truly predictive, but just echoes of events that have already happened. It's like training a weather forecasting AI on data that includes tomorrow's forecast. Mm -hmm. It might seem like it's making amazing predictions, yeah. but it's really just regurgitating information it already has. Yeah, that's a great analogy. It highlights the importance of controlling for this bias, you know, making sure the AI is truly learning to make predictions, not just memorizing past data. And the researchers came up with some really clever techniques to do just that, like using different knowledge cutoffs to see how the AI's predictions change when its access to information is limited. This research really underscores how important it is to understand how AI works, how it learns. Because if we don't, we can easily be misled by its apparent brilliance. You're absolutely right. We need to be able to kind of look under the hood, you know, to understand the mechanics of AI and to develop strategies for evaluating its performance and mitigating its biases. So where does all this leave us? What does this research tell us about the future of AI in finance? Is it all doom and gloom or is there still reason to be optimistic? I think it's a balanced picture. It's a much needed reality check on the limitations of AI, but also a powerful reminder of its potential. It's not a magic bullet but it's a tool that can be incredibly powerful when used correctly. It sounds like we need to approach AI with a healthy dose of both enthusiasm and skepticism. Exactly. We shouldn't get swept away by the hype or succumb to the fear mongering. We need to be informed and discerning to understand AI's strengths and weaknesses and to guide its development in a direction that benefits everyone. 
One thing this paper does so well is highlight the many different ways AI can be used in finance. You know, it's not just about predicting the stock market. It's about gaining deeper insights, understanding complex systems in ways we never could before. And this research points to some really exciting possibilities. Absolutely. We've talked about how AI can analyze text, images, and audio. Imagine using AI to sift through CEO speeches, investor presentations, social media chatter, to get like a much richer understanding of a company, its culture, its risks, its potential. It's like having an army of analysts each with a unique expertise, working together to paint this comprehensive picture of a company's performance and prospects. And that's just the beginning. AI is also being used to develop new financial instruments, improve risk management, and personalize investment advice. It's transforming the entire financial landscape from the ground up. It sounds like we're on the cusp of a major revolution in finance. It's both exhilarating and a bit daunting. It is a time of tremendous change. And with any major technological shift, there are both challenges and opportunities. We need to be mindful of the potential risks, but also embrace the possibility of creating a more equitable and sustainable financial system. And that brings us to a really important point, the ethical consideration surrounding AI and finance. We can't just focus on the technical aspects. We need to think about the societal impact, how these technologies are being used, and who they're benefiting. That's a crucial point. AI is a tool, and like any tool, it can be used for good or for ill. We need to ensure that it's being developed and deployed responsibly in a way that aligns with our values and contributes to a more just and equitable world. It sounds like we have a lot to think about as we navigate this new world of AI-powered finance. What are some key takeaways for our listeners as they grapple with these complex issues? Well, first and foremost, I'd say stay curious. Don't be afraid to ask questions, to challenge assumptions, to delve deeper into how these technologies work and what their implications are. Be a critical consumer of information, in other words. Don't just accept the hype or the fear-mongering at face value. Do your own research, educate yourself, and engage in thoughtful conversations about the role of AI in our lives. Exactly. And remember that AI is ultimately a tool, a reflection of our own ingenuity. It has the power to amplify both the best and the worst aspects of ourselves. It's up to us to ensure that it's used for good, that it serves humanity and contributes to a more just and sustainable future. This has been an incredibly insightful conversation. Until next time, fellow knowledge seekers, keep exploring, keep diving deep.